What's up, everybody? <laughs> Excuse me. What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crappers Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and uh, talk about whatever interesting topic that I've come up with this week. Um, and uh, before the stream, I was having like technical problem after technical problem. <clears throat> the first thing that happened was I was loading into my Emacs configuration. And for whatever reason, the color scheme was completely wrong. And apparently something got written to my Chemex 2 config from the last week's stream when we were messing around with, uh, oh, or actually maybe it was from something else. But anyway, custom file settings were getting written to the Chemex config and they were overriding my uh, theme settings. It was really weird. Uh, but anyway, after that, I had my webcam not working or my camera wasn't working and sound wasn't working. So anyway, got past all that stuff, thankfully, and uh, we're back on track now. Uh, I forgot actually, I should turn something on. Oh, what just happened? Okay, for some reason I didn't have any control over my screen for a second. Let's turn this weird alerts thing back on. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's say hello to the folks who are here so far. Uh, Mormon Jesus, Adrian, Daigo, John Eastman, Star Seven, One, All of the Above, uh, Case, Fat Finger, Death Crunch, Solemn Skater, Tomas, uh, Bill Scherer, and uh, also uh, Minad is here, and Minad is uh, the topic of the stream today, or his packages are the topic of the stream, so I'm glad that you were able to make it. Hello also to Thomas. All right. Hello to Brian as well. So, updates. Um, the Rational Emacs configuration that I was been talking about the last couple of weeks uh, has been receiving a lot of contributions still. Thank you all uh, who have been contributing. I appreciate um, all the stuff that you've been sending in so far. Obviously, I've been sort of AWOL on the repo this week. I haven't been reviewing any PRs or replying to issues. That's because I've been uh, kind of consumed with other projects at the moment. But this weekend, I'm going to get back to reviewing all those things. Um, and I will actually... Um, Talk about that again, probably in a stream, maybe next week or the week after next. Uh, but I want to kind of give a little bit of distance before I start talking about that project again. So, um, like I said, thanks so much for everybody who's been contributing that so far. And I'll I'll get back to everything this weekend. I think that um, it's probably about time for me to start uh, adding some co-maintainers to that project as well. So people can merge things in my absence. And there's a couple people I've got my eye on so far. So uh, you probably know who you are. I'll, I might be getting in contact with some folks. Uh, just make sure that... Um, your email addresses are available on your GitHub profile, so I can email you. So uh, let's see. Hello to Jeff and Thokal and uh, Yuver Gawain, I guess is how you pronounce your name. Ronnie Nissan, Sachin. All right. Uh, also, uh, on the Flux Harmonic channel, we're sort of sw switching topics a little bit coming up soon. Uh, and we're going to be doing some game development, or at least we're getting into some game development. Uh, we're, we'll be doing some infrastructural work next week, but um, very soon we'll be doing game development there because I'm planning to participate in the uh, Let em Dare Game Jam competition on April 1st. So I'm going to get some stuff done before then on stream because I want to stream my actual um, uh, uh, coding for the entry in the Let em Dare, Dare, Let em Dare, however you pronounce it, uh, the contest on April 1st. So uh, for those of you who are interested in game development, please uh, subscribe to either the YouTube channel or the Twitch channel for uh, Flux Harmonic Live and uh, keep an eye on that because it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hello to Gavin and Jackson. And then um, the next Emacs from Scratch video is gonna be uh, about setting key bindings and creating your own custom, <clears throat> excuse me, key prefixes. Uh, obviously, sorry. <clears throat> obviously there's packages like uh, general.el and stuff like that out th in the world that help you to set up your key bindings in a more um, convenient way, but you don't really need those packages. I mean, you can use them if you want to, but uh, learning how to configure key bindings in Emacs the right way is a very worthwhile thing to do. So the next video will be about that. I don't know if it'll be this week or the next week. It just depends on how much time I have, but uh, that that is the, what the next one will be about. Uh, Case says, Lisp Game Jam, anybody? Uh, yeah, uh, well, I probably would do that too because I am uh, I'm writing my own Lisp language and I'm going to be using it for Lum Dare. So uh, we'll we'll see about if I join other ones in the future. But uh, for now, at least this is the one I'm going to focus on because I've actually done it before. Hey, Elric. Okay, so that's all for the uh, the updates for today. So today, what we're going to be talking about is uh, trying out some new packages by uh, Daniel Mendler, uh, aka Minad, the creator of Vertico, Consult, and a bunch of other packages that you've probably heard of already because I've talked about them on, on this channel a few times. Um, and it, it seems that he's been very busy lately um, 
uh, creating a bunch of new packages uh, for various different purposes. So today what I want to do is uh, try some of these packages out and see what we like about them and whether we might want to try to use them in um, configurations. Uh, it's very likely that a couple of these are going to show up in uh, the Rational Emacs config, but uh, we want to take a look at those right now because I haven't actually tried any of these yet, so it'll be a first time for me to take a look at them. Uh, we've talked about, you know, Corfu, Vertigo, um, Consult, uh, Marginalia, etc. on the channel before, but these are ones that I personally haven't even taken a look at yet. Mormon Jesus says, very good idea. It's good to use helper tools, but only when you know how stuff actually works without any help. Yeah. Uh, Adrian says, rerouting my caps lock to control has really helped my hand strain. Yeah, that was what actually made it possible for me to use Emacs on a daily basis because um, throwing your pinky down to the the lowest row of keys on the keyboard all the time to hit Emacs key bindings, it's not good. All right. And if we don't make it through all these packages, we may try the rest in another stream soon. Um, it really just depends on how long it takes for us to try to configure all of these and try them out and try to understand what is uh, useful about them. And they all look really useful, so I think we'll have a good time uh, taking a look at these. Um, so let me open up a new uh, tab, maybe. Uh, let's see, tab bar new, right? Yeah, it takes a little while, I don't know why. Uh, tab bar rename. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, pull up the Rational Emacs config, actually, because I can use it for getting through this pretty easily. Come on now. And then, uh, what was I doing? Uh, I probably need to go into B-term for this. B-term, there we go. So, geeks, shell. I don't want to do this um, pure because it causes problems. Uh, manifest SEM. Cool. Gavin says, do you use control uh, left square bracket for escape in Emacs? I know that it's possible to do that, but I haven't been yeah, using that. There are some of those uh, key bindings that are kind of useful, like that one in particular, but uh, I haven't gotten into a habit of using them. Shabum says, it's even better when you bind caps to escape in control. Um, yeah, that could be nice. Are you using like multiple taps or something? Like tap it to do escape and then hold it to, to do control? Because that's a pretty nice way to do it as well, but I, I haven't set that up for myself yet. Emacs with profile rational, and uh, I'm gonna. Okay, so this is kind of a basic setup, <coughs> which is good. Strange that it's not actually setting my font size correctly, though. I wonder what's. Maybe I should pull the latest on that because I haven't actually pulled it in a, in a little bit. Well, no, not since the last time. Let's see. Anything in there? I should be using my own. Ah, oh, great. Now I have to type in my passphrase. Um, let's see. Projects code. Uh, rational. There we go. I'm gonna pull from Origin Master. Okay. So now, I should be able to run that again. Hopefully this will work. Ah, pfft. Come on. I need to see why my config is not loading the right stuff. So, config slash rational emacs slash uh, config.el, is that right? <clears throat> why are you not running this? That's interesting. Can't make the font bigger. Oh, I don't have that font. All right. So let's just get out of this. Sorry, folks. I did not get a chance to prepare uh, setting up my Emacs uh, config before the stream, so now you're just seeing me fumble around to get it working. What is going on? I gotta copy too much stuff. Let's just type like normal human beings, huh? B term, it's gone now. All right, so Emacs with profile equals uh, rational. Are you serious? 
Anyway, config rational Emacs. Uh, config.el. It's really interesting that this is not loading right now. Uh, eval buffer. Okay, at least that works. So we'll full screen that one. Fumbling around is a true Emacs experience. That's right, Fearinger. Hey, Minas Mazar. Check your local config.el. Yeah, my local config.el is not uh, working correctly, apparently. Okay, so. First of all. I think maybe I'll open this on this other screen. Org. Okay. So the first package we're going to take a look at today is called cape. So um, minad slash cape. So this is um, called completion at point extensions. And uh, basically the idea is that uh, there's a system in Emacs called completion at point, which is meant to give you completions for something that is at the current cursor location in a buffer. And uh, this is an extensible system that uh, allows you to plug in new completion backends for giving completions at the, at the point in buffer. So uh, CAPE apparently provides a set of extensions or functions that can be used in combination with uh, Corfu for the, or with the default completion UI. So uh, the ideal state, I guess, is for using it with Corfu, which we may set back up again in this, in this uh, case. Um, and then um, we will uh, try some of these functions out because I think some of these are actually pretty useful, especially if you uh, do a lot of programming. And uh, let's see, uh, Tomas says, watching you fumble is what we are here for, so we fumble less later alone. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to look at it. So first of all, let's go grab some Corfu config. What is Corfu, Corf, man, I'm just like, not really doing well today, it seems. So let's just grab this initial core foo config. I know there's one here. Uh, yeah, we don't need a whole lot. Hopefully it picks up the latest core foo also. So um, core foo is, if you've ever used company mode before, core foo is kind of like a, a, a more mm, well integrated company mode that uses the uh, completion at point system company that sort of does its own thing and that's the reason why it's not as ideal in my opinion okay so we're gonna drop a uh, corfu config in here and i should mention that uh gavin who's here right now seems to have uh provided a corfu and cape configuration for uh rational emacs so what i do here won't be put in rational emacs we already have something in the works and i'll take a look at that soon for sure um why did it not copy that all right, so control Y, dude, there we go. At least that worked. Okay. K says, I tried Corfu for a bit, but I got so used to my mini buffer for completion at point setup that I couldn't use it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you, you find the right way to do things that works for you and there's really no point in uh, anything else. Um, let's pull in a rational, uh, oops, require, rational use package and people were asking me why I have this and that's because of, of this reason because I need to have access to um, use package for demonstrations no such file or directory what are you talking about ERC image who cares about that okay so maybe it will work at least let's try this Okay, so uh, do we have Corfu now? Let me go and uh, type something in here. How about use P, Control Alt I? Yeah, that looks like Corfu. Okay, cool. So that's this is what Corfu looks like whenever you have it set up. It basically is just a, a pop up inside the current buffer to give you completions at the current point. And since I'm in an Emacs list buffer, it knows how to do completions. So if I were to type in describe dash Control Alt I, then it will give you the uh, completion at point. Um. So that's the starting point, and then we can go ahead and try to pull in the rest of the stuff that we might want to use with uh, with Cape. So use package Cape. Hey, Marduk. Um, so 
so there's a, a number of functions that you can uh, pull in from the uh, cape package uh, to give you completions in various different contexts uh, so things like file names um, keywords for a programming language i'm kind of curious about what that means uh, symbols from emacs lisp um, abbreviations and i think there's deabrieve also but uh, abbreviations basically are like you know little text macros that can expand into something bigger which is very useful uh, Tomas says the problem with completion candidates at the bottom in the echo area is that it draws attention away from the point where you type it's a problem if others are trying to follow you since they don't expect it yeah that's true okay so um then I spell complete word from I spell dictionary that would be pretty helpful for people who are writing uh, dictionary, uh, complete word from dictionary file, uh, complete an entire line from a file. I'm kind of curious about what that does. Uh, text commands, uh, SGML uh, entities, cool. And then uh, complete Unicode character using RFC 1345 mnemonics. I don't know much about that one, but uh, we might see what that does in just a moment. Okay, so uh, there's a, a set of suggestions here actually for all these things. So that's kind of helpful actually. Um, what we can do is just grab this list or this whole config here basically and then drop it into our config so I'll just uh, put that here instead of what I was doing before and then we can well let's not add all of these yet so I'll tell you what this does in a little bit let's experiment with the actual functions first before we start adding them to the, that uh, that list so I'm going to use Control alt x to install this. Seems like he's already done it. So if, uh, if I want to complete a file at the current location, let's say like dot dot slash, um, well, I don't even know. Let's see what happens when I complete with dot dot slash. I'm going to use Control c p um, f Okay, cannot open, what? Ensure T, that's probably what needs to happen. I muted my audio. That's great. Uh, Control X. Here we go. Now it's installing it. Hey, gun. Okay, there we go. Now it will actually do what it's supposed to. So uh, let me use that. Control C, P, F. And now it's actually giving me a uh, folder completions, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know what it was picking up there, though. So let's see. Control C, P, F. Now these um, folder completions are, ah, it's in my config folder. So that does work pretty well. Uh, these folder completions are coming from this uh, binding here, this control CPF. And um, it is something that if you want a certain type of completion, then you can set it up to a particular key binding. Like I wouldn't necessarily recommend setting up all these bindings like this out of the box. I think this is there just as a recommendation, but um, some of these, like let's say the I spell one or maybe the dict one, I wouldn't set up as a default completion candidate. I would just have that be a key binding like this so you can call it up whenever you want to. But things like uh, cape file seem useful to me in general. So what you can do is uh, use add to list and add it to this completion at point functions. And that's sort of the point of this whole thing. Um, this is a... Um, a list of completion backends for completion at points. So all these functions will, be, will get called to generate uh, completions that could be shown at, a, at any given location. So if I were to add that to that list, let's just eval that one line here and then go up to this uh, dot dot slash and hit control alt I, I think it will give me file completions. Yeah, so that does that. So I'm kind of curious. Um, what happens? Let's see what folder am I in? This okay. So if I type in C O N F and press Control Alt I, I get some config stuff. But I wonder if config.el will show up in this list. Doesn't look like it. I don't really know exactly how um, com uh, completion at point backends work. But maybe if it doesn't find one from an earlier back end, then it will go to another. So what else do we have in that folder that I could look at? Um, let's see, et cetera. How about et cetera, et cetera, or yeah. Uh, no, nah, I'm still finding a bunch of other stuff too. But if I do like a slash, 
then it will do uh, file completion. So I'm not sure what the rules are for that. Maybe it's even something that the, um, the cape file function does, but at least with this, I feel like this function by itself is super useful and I would put it in my config immediately just, just for that reason. Um, Minad says, uh, yes, CapF backends are tried in order. The candidates are not merged. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I think there's a way, I, I thought I saw some stuff in the docs about making it possible to merge them though. So we might have to look at that a little bit later. So um, now let's try another one. We're gonna try this Cape keyword. I don't really know what that's gonna do, but uh, if I put colon and then uh, control C P K, okay, no completions. Let's look if, the, if there's any docs on that Cape keyword. All right, so rule of thumb works well for static completion functions like brief cap keep keyword. I wonder if it pulls up keywords from the current buffer or something. So do we have any like def? Let's see. Oh, no, that's not, that's not the right one. A def and then control C P K define. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I've been writing scheme like code recently define uh, my funk. Let's just leave it like this T. I'm curious if uh, def control C P K. Nah, it doesn't pick it up. So I'm not sure exactly. I'm not sure exactly how it pulls the keyword information. Uh, Minad also um, says, uh, personally, I recommend explicitly using key bindings. I think it's like them omnicomplete. I mean, that could be a good way to do it, to be honest, um, especially if you know exactly what it is you're looking for. Come on now. We got a, more spammers in the chat. Okay. So, uh, what else we got here? Diabrev or Diabrev completion. Um, I wonder which ones are the, one of those I have. Yeah, it, those are keywords in the language, Tomas, but they they don't seem to be getting uh, completed. So, Control C P K, and it says down in the bottom in the echo area, no completions. So, um, let me actually just go look at the code. How about that? Let's see what the code has in it. So let's see, complete word at point, annotation function, lambda keyword, company kind keyword. Uh, I wonder if that's something that you need like a language server hooked up to uh, make it work. Table with properties keyword, cape keyword. Interesting. So how about I load up <clears throat> some code? If I go to projects code, uh, flux compose source, uh, how do you have eglot loaded here? Well, we're, we'll try it anyway. How about this? Uh, lib slash mesh slash source slash compiler dot C. So, um, yeah, sure. Why not? And then require eglot. I'm pretty sure this is going to come from my Emacs config. So eglot. Okay. So now that I've got a language server set up and running here, I wonder if it will give me anything. So if I were to type uh, TYP and then control CPK. Yeah. So it completes type def. That's cool. Control CPK. Yeah. So you do get keywords. I think those must be coming from the language server. Oh, Cape keywords and a list. Let's take a look at that. Cape keywords. Ah, great. Wow. All right. So if you look at Cape keywords, apparently that's the place where all this comes from. It's uh, keyed on the mode. And then there's just a list of keywords for each of those, which is pretty nice, actually. A lot of stuff in there. Scheme mode, no scheme mode. Lisp. Uh, common Lisp, no. We need some scheme in there. But uh, that could be helpful for quickly typing out uh, keywords and whatnot, I think. Uh, eglot shutdown. All right, cool. Get rid of that buffer. Okay, so that's uh, Cape Keyword. And then uh, what else we have? Diabrieve. So I need to find some of those Diabrieves, maybe. So let's see. Control C, P, D. No completions. Um, Diabrieve Emacs. 
come on now. I guess I should look at the manual, right? I don't have anything, uh, any of these uh, set up in my own config. Uh, do a brief customization. Uh, so it's, it's pulling it from the current buffer, right? So my F, uh, D, a brief expand. Okay, okay. So it's from the current buffer. So if I were to type CA and then I uh, control C, control P, control D, it just pulls words from the current buffer, which is kind of useful, to be honest. If you have some function names or something that are really long in the current buffer, you can um, uh, call cape D abrieve, which is using the built-in functionality of D, D abrieve mode in Emacs to dynamically source words from the current buffer, maybe even other buffers, I'm not sure, exactly sure. Let's see. Automatically you insert text, but all abrieves must be defined explicitly. That's for abrieve. Dynamic abreaves allow the meanings of abbreviations to be determined automatically from the contents of the buffer, but dynamic abreave expansion happens only when you request it explicitly. So uh, you can have that be one of the possibilities here. So let's run that in our um, completion of point functions list. So if I were to type my F and then control I, no match. Interesting. Let's check to make sure that I put that in there. Yeah, it's in there. What about, so is there a mode? No. Oh, hold on. Is that right? Or is it a brieve? Huh? Huh. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what happened. So let's try it again. My F, control I, no match. What am I missing here? Completion at point functions. And that's a real function, right? Okay, so that, that exists. That also exists, but neither are, are pulling it up. CAP, control alt I. So it, it that's coming from Diabrief. That's, that's happening just fine. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the other one, unless it was just a fluke on my part. Yeah, weird. My F doesn't work, but, but uh, my does and M does, okay. Ronnie says, <clears throat> Diabrieve gets from multiple buffers for me, all buffers in a project at least. That'd be pretty cool, actually. Um, all right, so that is, let's see. Let's just list which ones we've, we've looked at so far. We've looked at uh, cape, file, cape, keyword, cape, Diabrieve. Cape symbol. Let's try that one with a key binding. Control C, P, S. Okay, so there's a bunch of interesting. What does it consider a symbol? A bunch of stuff in this list. All right, let's go look at the, the docs for that one. Oops, all right. Complete symbol at point. Cape symbol table with properties, ob array. Okay, so that's actually stuff in Emacs, Emacs symbols apparently. But I guess that the idea is that you could do that anywhere. So let's say you were in an org mode buffer, maybe. So test.org. And then um, what's that bound to? It's bound to control C, P, S. So let's say F, I, control C, P, S, N, D file. Yeah, so you can complete the name of Emacs functions and variables inside of any other buffer, which is kind of nice if you don't want to be writing, uh, if you don't want to have to like use some other way in Emacs to find those. Uh, Minad says, Cape Diabrieve does not offer completions if the word is too short. This ensures that it doesn't get, doesn't set in too aggressively. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's pretty useful, actually. I think that's a pretty cool thing, especially if you write about uh, stuff in Emacs a lot like I do. So that's a pretty useful function. Let me fix that really quick. Um, I spell. I don't even know if I have I spell set up right. Yeah, I need to have iSpell installed. So how about I go and try to do that with Geeks really quick. Uh, Geeks install iSpell. Hey, it actually exists.
Okay, so now... <clears throat> uh, I spell... Okay, I don't know how to get out of this. <laughs> Whoops, okay, that worked. Okay, so, um, let's see, Blorf. Control C, P, I. No completions, okay. Uh, control C, P, I. No completions. I wonder what I had to do to make that work. Obviously, Minad, I'm not reading the documentation for these until I've, I've tried them already, so... I'm not the best example of someone who is... Well, maybe I am. I don't know. Maybe that's what people do. They just run functions and see what happens. Cape, I spell words. Um, return all words from I spell matching str. Okay. I wonder if cape, I spell properties. Yeah, I don't know if it, if it just doesn't know that it exists. Well, it says I spell in the name, so I'm guessing it's I spell. So, tests, cape, I spell, test, cape, I spell. Yeah, still not giving me anything here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing wrong. Uh, let's try the next one, which is cape line, which should be pretty interesting. So use P, control C, P, L. Ah, hmm. So it's kind of interesting thinking about how you might use this. I'm trying to think of like the case where you might want to complete an existing line inside of the a current file. And it even gives you the ability to uh, go backwards, which is really cool. Uh, I, R, whoops. All right, let's do that one more time. U, I. Control C P L R E. Hmm. I keep uh, hitting Control J because that's what my normal key bindings would be. Uh, Mohammed says maybe uncomment the add to list. Yeah, that doesn't matter in this case because I'm calling the function directly, so it shouldn't. That shouldn't matter. Okay. So um, yeah, that's actually pretty cool it would allow you to pull some other lines. So let's say maybe you wanted to reuse uh, the semantics of some other line. So if I were to type in add to and then control C P L and I'm like, okay, I want to grab one of these and then, you know, edit it. Basically you could really quickly uh, copy something from another place in the file, which is kind of an interesting idea. So Cape line, it's pretty cool. Um, Cape dict. I don't think we have a dictionary file, so I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work, but uh, let's see what happens when I try to use that one. C, control P, W, um, et cetera, dictionaries, common words. So, oh, what did I just do? <clears throat> Deleted the whole file. So, come on. I wonder if Geeks has any dictionary files. Um, Emacs dictionary, diction. Nope. Dictionary server. Nah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably don't have anything for that one. I spell program name. Ah, oh, you know, that could be... That could be it, actually. Gun has a good suggestion here. So, I spell program name is I spell. Um... How about this? Well, you know, it did run ISPO before, strangely. Read link, um, which I spell. Say what? Of course. Let's go here, or maybe another V term. Oh, come on. Vterm started doing this thing recently where if you run Vterm, it jumps back to the existing uh, terminal, and I do not like it. Yeah, here we go. All right, so uh, which I spell. All right, and then I need to use read link. I guess I don't really need to use read link, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. And I'm doing this because of geeks, obviously. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, Minad says, one tip, check out the customization variables of Cape, um, yikes. Okay, so, customization, customize group, Cape, it's not Cape, 
All right, I'll, I'll say what, I'll do what Minad said. Control H V Cape Dash C. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work for for my situation. Wait, what? Control H V Cape. Mm-hmm. I'm in the wrong Emacs config. That's why. Bad streamer, bad. Okay. Here we go. Control H V Cape Dash C. No. But at least let me go in here. Mm, maybe I can do uh customize group cape. There it is. Okay. So um Cape Dia Reeve, check other buffers. Okay, so that's actually some useful stuff here. Uh, min length, great. Dict file, you can change the dictionary file to wherever you want. File directory must exist, for, uh, for that's for file completion. Okay, so that's a few different useful parameters, I think. <clears throat> Minutes, let's try it again. Control H, V, Cape, C space. Yeah, so... Um, Oh, control dot. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm I'm obviously um, having a stroke right now. Capital E. There we go. Wow. They just pulled a bunch of other crap in there too, though. That did work. <clears throat> uh, Aminas Mazer says, several commands are built in in eShell. Yes, like iSpell, which we just found. Grep also is built into eShell, so you'll end up running into things that you don't expect. Okay, so let's get back to it. We don't want to spend too much more time on this package. This is a great package, though. I'm really looking forward to hooking up some of this stuff. Um, the tech stuff, I'm not personally as interested in, and I'm not a, a text or tech expert, so uh, you might have to be the one to go look at that if you're interested in that. Um, as far as the uh, control CPR for the RFC whatever, let's see, control CPR. Mm, what is the, let's see, RFC 1345. Character mnemonics. I don't even know what this is supposed to look like. Oh, it's these ampersand things. Ampersand? Who knows? All right. So, um, is there any example here? Uh, RFC. Yeah, we, it might be helpful to have some examples, uh, Daniel, for some of these things so that it's easier to try them out because I don't even know like how you would complete one of these uh, Unicode care string things. Uh, Gun says tech like uh, Greek he. You're probably right. Oh, wait, is this? Oh, okay, you can make your own emoji backend. So uh, one last thing. Um, there is this super cap F functionality, um, which is the ability to merge multiple of these together. Hey, Karthik. So let's actually take a look at that really quick and make a custom one. So set queue local completion at point functions. I think that this example uses set queue local just so that you could do it in a particular buffer if you wanted to. So let's uh, paste this code in. Um, Diapreev, let's put uh, Diapreev um, cape. I don't want dict. Let's put file there instead and then keyword. I'll eval that code, <coughs> excuse me, code. And then if I were to type in um, co control alt i, then it looks like I'm getting Wow, that's a lot of stuff I didn't expect to see. Yeah, I'm getting folder paths, but that's from Diabrieve. Interesting. I wonder if, it, they, if they all say the same thing. Oh. So, let's see. Let me check this. That seems right, I think. So, Cape, Cape Super Cap F. It's supposed to merge these together, I think. Minad says try using uh, cape text. Uh, which one was that? Uh, let's just run a cape text. Yeah, okay. Tech. 
All right, that seems to do something. What about um, copy? Yeah, copyright. Cool. That does work. That one's kind of nice. All right, so the super cap F. Let me see if uh, like literally using a file works. Doesn't seem to be doing anything this time. And then Kate keyword. There's nothing for Emacs list buffers, but if we were to open that C buffer, maybe it would do the same thing again. Oops, uh, let's go, wait. Let's go back to um, projects code, uh, flux compose, source, core, main.c. Inside this buffer, if I were to use, um, no, that doesn't work. Uh, int. Oh, I need to set this buffer as well. Whoa. Let's copy this and then go over to that buffer, eval this code string. And then control alt I. Yeah. How about uh, TY? So I think the Diabrief name is not actually true. I think it's lying about that because it's probably coming from the symbol completion at that point, if I'm not mistaken. Keyword, keyword completion. What if we change it to add the uh, symbol? Cape symbol. I'm gonna copy this code here, go back to the other buffer, eval that, and then type in um, desk control alt I. Oh, okay, so that actually does give the right names. Huh, it's really interesting how that worked. Hey, Felipe. It's an input method accessible with control slash and the prefix is and or ampersand. So try turning that input method on, pressing at uh, ampersand and control CPR and it will allow you to see what combinations lead to what symbols. Okay. So let's try it right here then. Um, control slash. Okay, RFC. Okay. So then um, ampersand. And control C P R. Yeah, no completions. I'm not sure exactly which one is supposed to use. Mm. C P R. Yeah, still not doing anything there. All right, let me just uh, pull that back off then. Control slash toggle input method. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did it work? I don't know what input method I'm currently in. Input method. Current is nil good. At AR. Yeah, still not working, but that's okay. So, um, anything else? I think that's good. I, I like uh, ca uh, cape. I think it's really nice, uh, useful functionality in my opinion. So let's move on to another package to take a look at. And the next one I had in the list is Temple, which is a templating package, which uh, probably is gonna be useful to a lot of people. Maybe you don't realize you need it until you start you know, hating yourself for having to type the same stuff over and over again. Um, a, an obvious um, competitor to this package would be something like Yas Snippet. And you can see this list of alternatives here that has the list of pretty much everything else that exists that does something similar. Um, but the things that are built in that you might know about are abrieve.el, skeleton.el, and tempo.el. Uh, there's already stuff built in for this. However, I would say that, at least in the case of skeleton, um, it's there's not really good documentation for it, and it's kind of complicated to use uh, from my brief experience using it. So I'm curious to see how much better uh, Temple is going to be because I, I've got a feeling it will be. Something I saw right here that looks really cool too is that it's actually completing um, uh, equal signs around the block, which would be really cool for you know keeping files up to date. Uh, let's see. So let's grab the temple quick start config here. Thank you very much, Daniel, for having these available. Uh, let's see. Set up cap f. Okay, so we also have a cap f functionality to pull those in, which is certainly useful. Let's take a look at the config really quick. So uh, meta plus is completion of a template. Meta star is insertion, I'm guessing. 
Then setting up completion at point, it adds it to completion at point functions, which we just saw with cape. Uh, temple expand. So it just adds that to the existing list of completion at point functions. Um, and then, okay, that's a function that gets defined here. So this is something that you would put in your own configuration. It doesn't come as part of temple. Then you could set that up for prog mode hooks or text mode hooks. And then you can make the templates available locally or globally. Okay, we probably don't need to do that though, because I think the rest of this config takes care of a lot of it. And also I need to probably ensure that this exists. So let's pull that in right now. The Minadverse has grown. Yes, that's true. We, we, we're all living in the Minadverse. Okay, so um, now that we have Temple set up, it probably doesn't do anything by default. I'm I'm guessing it doesn't do anything by default. Let's see, Meta Plus. Um, yeah, so there's I, there needs to be a template file apparently in the Emacs config folder. Template file format. So um, this seems to be the format for the templates. So let's copy this just verbatim, and then we can take a look at it. There seems to be some ELISP stuff here we can use also. Oh, that's for work mode. E shell mode. That's cool. Emacs list mode. Great. So we can definitely try this out. Um, I'm going to go to, does it have a thing for temple template find? You know what would be really cool, Daniel, is if you had a, a, a command that automatically navigated to the path of your template file so you don't have to go uh, you navigate there directly. Rational Emacs, uh, what is it, templates, I think. Uh, templates, okay. So I'll paste that in and save it. Control C, Control C, doesn't turn it on? Okay, Lisp mode. Hey, all right. So this is the format for templates. Um, and it seems that you start with a, a line that says what the mode name is for the template. And then you have the, the individual templates. And I'm guessing these are the names of the templates in the first position of the, the list. And then everything else after that is uh, the, the Emacs Lisp code that gets executed when that template gets invoked, which is kind of nice. I like the fact that you can do Emacs Lisp code here. Uh, here in the uh, begin template, it looks like there's variables that you can use and some other expansions. So we'll have to look at the syntax for that too. But let's go into an Emacs Lisp mode buffer and try to use uh, some of these templates like Lambda, for instance. So if I were to use uh, meta plus, no such file or directory. Oh, okay, so I put it in the wrong place. Let's go um, move file or rename file, rename file. So I wanna rename um, templates to projects code rational emacs, rational emacs templates. All right, so now if I use control alt plus, there we go. Now we get a list of templates uh, that, that are completions from um, uh, Corfu. So if I type in L, whoa, control alt plus lambda and press enter, then it automatically sets up a template for entering a lambda. And I see also a little line here too, which makes me think it's gonna jump to that next position if I hit tab or something. So um, uh, var, and then I'll press tab. Okay, tab doesn't do it. I wonder if enter does it. Nope, enter doesn't do it. Interesting, so what is the key binding for going to the next? Um, I guess there isn't a key binding, is there? Let's check out temple map, map. Okay, so here are the bindings for, for going between fields. Beginning, uh, okay, meta down, meta up. Personally, I would have expected um, uh, meta in, meta p, but maybe that's because it's already taken. Okay, so um, wait, hold on, what did I just do? Uh, message. Hey, it works. Work. Okay, whatever. And then, I don't know why it's still highlighted. Uh, abort. Meta K, Meta K, what's that do? Oh, interesting, okay. What about uh, Meta Escape, Escape? Okay, and that, that removes what you put in the buffer, that's cool.
Okay. Well, uh, that's super nice. Um, let's see what else it has for templates for Emacs Lisp in the uh, sort of suggested configuration. If I use um, meta plus, there is a def var syntax, which is nice. Uh, def const. Uh, command binding, which or a command uh, syntax. So let's say um, sc do something. And then uh, meta, let's see. I think you can use curly braces too. Meta right curly brace. Okay. Param meta right curly brace. Here's the documentation. Meta right curly brace. Uh, do something. Okay. So that does work. Oh. Is it, what does end mean in this case? Okay, it just means go to the end of the template. All right. I'm just wondering why the highlighting still persists after you finish typing. Okay. Um, let's see, what else can we learn from the docs here? Kay says, looks like I maybe ought to get into Temple. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I have a few different places where I want to use this for sure. Dan says, Meta X Tetris. We don't have time for that. Um, and one thing I just noticed here in the docs, note that this package is not a competitor to the mature and very widely used Yas Snippet library, which comes with many readily available snippet collections. Uh, try Temple only if you like small and simple packages. With Temple, you write your templates in Lisp syntax. Uh, which my, from my perspective fits well into the hackable nature of Emacs. I agree. Okay, so um, let's see, what else do we have in here? There's Emacs list, there's e shell mode, which is pretty awesome, I think, because you can do inline expansion in e shell. So how about this? We'll go into uh, e shell. And uh, is Corfu mode turned on in here? Let's see, let's use uh, meta plus. Okay, so this is something. Uh, unless, uh, nil, I don't know. Okay, so that does work. Um, it's pretty nice to have that functionality just right there in eShell. I like that. Text mode, uh, nice little cut lines, that's cool. Uh, ASCII box, now that, that's a cool little uh, example. You can generate the lines for a, a box by using make string uh, with a certain number of characters. Rot 13, uh, calc. There's some stuff here for org mode as well, which might be pretty useful. So instead of using, um, what do you call them? Uh, the, the org tempo, you could probably use this instead. I would use this for sure, like title and whatnot. I hate having to title this, uh, type all this stuff out, especially if you can uh, easily add all this stuff yourself so let's try that really quickly. I'm going to go into that todo.org file or test.org file that we did. Um, title. Nice. And then you, you know, this is not my name, obviously, but that's what Daniel has in the example. But um, for me, setting up new um, org files for writing show notes for episodes or for the stuff for Flux Harmonic, et cetera, I think is super, super useful. Uh, to have that functionality as a little template, and especially whenever it's in a format that makes it very easy for you to edit it. So um, I'm I'm very positive on the idea of doing this. Now I'm curious about these. I think this must be new line, right? I don't know what this slash R is. Let's try that quote. Okay. Is that like a line feed? What is R? R col uh, open bracket. Oh, here we go. The region but indented. Inserts the current region, the region but indented. Okay, so I think what happens here is like, let's say this is a great quote. If I select this code or this text and then type in quote, whoa, hold on, what, just, what did I do? I think evil mode is um, causing some some trouble. Because I want to do, it's going to make me curse here. Uh, wow, jeez. So here, let's do this in, uh, Plain old Emacs style. Control Alt Plus. Control Shift Plus. There we go. Quote. Dude. What is happening? Come on now. Control Alt Plus. Q. Enter. Okay. So it did not seem to indent that for me, but I'm sure it's supposed to. That's what it seems like. The region but indented. 
So let's just take a little closer look at the syntax here. So string inserts a string literal, as you can see with these parts here, they're just strings. P inserts an unnamed placeholder field, probably a place for your cursor to jump to. N inserts a new line. Uh, this arrow indents with indent according to mode, which is kind of nice. R inserts the current region, which I'm, is what's selected currently. Uh, the region but indented inserts a new line and indents. I guess because this doesn't have any inherent indentation, it just doesn't indent it at all. Yeah, that's probably why. Um, we'll see. Uh, insert new line only if there's white space between start and end point. Inserts a named field, which is interesting. There's also prompting you can do. So what does that do? So named field. Let's go and look for an example of that in the templates file. Actually, let's do um, projects code, rational templates. I think that was probably already open. Uh, what was it? S. S. Come on now. S. Jeez. Whatever. This begin is an example, but there must be one in. Um, so not an org. Emacs Lisp? No. S. S space. There we go. ASCII box. Okay. So in text mode, which I don't know if um, that qualifies uh, in org, if org mode qualifies, but let's try that ASCII box. So uh, ask. Ah, okay, so testing out the ASCII box. That's awesome. I like that a lot. And um, it didn't actually have a name, did it? Let's go back here. Okay, I see what's happening. So um, the interesting thing about this example here is that you can refer to a particular field by name. So if right here I have this SSDR, and this is the thing that you're gonna be typing in, but these other lines, this make string, it actually pulls the STR variable that you uh, have typed in here. And that's, I think that's the reason why that text is able to expand because this make string is getting the length of that string you've typed in and it's replacing the existing text. So that's pretty clever. I like that a lot. So if I try that again, actually, let's keep trying it. I wonder if that's why it stays highlighted. Uh, Gavin, I, I approved your comment. Yeah, sometimes uh, code snippets act weird. So yeah, that's a pretty awesome feature. I like uh, I like Temple quite a lot. I'm going to start using this because I have a few places where I, where I need it. I keep typing such repetitive crap all the time. And I tried starting to use uh, Skeleton recently for that. Not good. Not easy to use, that's what I'll say. Uh, let's go and check out, um, so the cap F, it's supposed to already be set up for uh, prog mode and text mode hooks. So let's check out uh, the org file. Actually, let's kill it and can go back into it. Test, where was it? Was that in config? Dot config, rational, test.org, okay. So I'm in this file, does ASC work? Um, let's check um, completion at point functions. Temple expand is in there. Why is it not actually expanding to anything though? What about quo? Hmm. Interesting. So Corfu mode is it on in this buffer? No, it's it's it was on already. So. Interesting. Let's check the config one more time. So temple expand is there. Um, I'm not sure why all of a sudden it's not working. Because it should be showing up. Uh, completion of point functions. Temple is the first one. Yeah. Oh, hold on. It says complete symbol. Why is it doing complete symbol? Completion at point. 
Yeah. Control C P P. Not doing anything, is it? All right, that's pretty weird. Maybe org mode uh, does something strange. Let's go to a text file, test.txt. Uh, ASC, control alt I, look up words error. Ah, uh, is that because I have, huh? Control C, P, P. Yeah, that's not working. Not sure why. Temple expand versus temple complete. So uh, temple expand. Temple complete. Yeah, it's weird that um, it's not working with. Hold on, is that what um, Daniel's trying to tell me? Yeah, so I use that instead. Is that what this, is that what's happening? Let me go back and kill this file. Go back there again, and then um, ASC Control Alt I. No, oh Control C P P. Okay, so that does work. So yeah, apparently you need to go into your config. Don't follow that snippet exactly. If you want to use completions, you have to actually use temple complete instead of temple expand, which does make sense. I think we add temple expand before the main programming mode cap F, <coughs> excuse me, cap F. Yeah. Check out the doc stream, those two commands. So let's see. Ah, well, it even says it here. Uh, temple expand only triggers on exact matches. You know, that's not a bad idea. So let's go back. Uh, ASCII box, temple expand, boom, okay. Yeah, probably is better that way, to be honest. All right, anything else? T temple complete is too aggressive? Okay, <clears throat> you're probably right. All right, so we'll go back to test.txt. We'll kill that buffer. We'll open it again. And then uh, ASCII. So if I press Control Alt I, it doesn't do anything. ASCII box, Control Alt I, Control C, P, P. Okay, so that does work in the end. Is there anything else for text mode worth looking at? Mm, cut, rot 13. Let's see. Hello, system crafters. Let me select this text. So this thing doesn't really um, work well with evil mode though, because whenever the buffers read only because we're in normal mode, it apparently doesn't function. So um, what was it called? Rot 13? Yeah. Oh, oh. It doesn't pull the, the region. That's pretty funny. Urib Flifker's Pins Grape. That sounds like some kind of stuff you would say in Skyrim. All right, so I think that's good for this package. I, I really like it. I think that people should try that package out. It's really cool. So the next one, uh, tab bookmark. This one seems pretty awesome also. This is something that might be pretty useful for those of us who are um, starting to use the uh, tab bar mode more and more. Uh, this package provides commands which allow storing the window configuration of the current tab as an Emacs bookmark. This is this way the view is automatically persisted and can be restored after a restart. So uh, it's basically like saving sessions for bookmarks, sorry, for tabs. So let's see, if we go into this config, um, tab bar new tab. Takes us a little time there, okay. so. Let's also um, change the name. So uh, tab bar rename tab uh, test tab. Why is it so slow? Split the window a little bit. Add some different buffers open config.el. Um, see cape.el who knows and then the template file. Okay, so now well, I need to install that package first, obviously. So tab bookmark um, use package. Is this on? No, it doesn't seem to be on um, anything yet. This probably is too new. So we can use straight to pick it up, I think. So uh, straight use package. Um, tab bookmark. What is it called? Host. Well, let's see. Repo. 
uh, minad slash tab bookmark. Is this the right syntax? I can't even remember. Control X, Control E. Okay. Um, Fatfinger Death Crunch asks if its Twitch stream is lagging. I noticed I got a little bit of a um, uh, notification from YouTube a moment ago that there was uh, some delay, so maybe there was something for a moment. Let's see. Straight use. Oops. Yeah, looking at my own configuration is not the right place to go for that. Straight use package. Um, repo, GitHub repo. Okay, type git host GitHub. Do I have to put the the host? Yeah, whatever. There we go. Two different re recipes given for tab bookmark. Sure, whatever. Um. Now, this one is not documented yet because I think it was just created. So sorry if I'm you know, spilling the beans a little bit too early here, Daniel. Let's see what we have. Uh, tab bookmark, this is all functions, um, interactive, tab bookmark. If tab bookmark name exists, open it, otherwise save the current tab. So let's try uh, running tab bookmark. Um, this is going to be, um, yeah, test tab. How about that? All right. So if I close the tab, tab bookmark, open, test tab one, three buffers. Sweet. So does, is it about, does it know what buffers were open? It just, it's just basically what, um, windows were open at a certain time. So, um, this could be pretty useful for. Like if you use different tabs for working on different projects, like I do, I'm, I have multiple tabs open all day because I'm working on different projects. So you could save those projects, maybe as Emacs is exiting, go through all your tabs and run this tab bookmark thing to save them. And then um, <laughs> Tomas says this straight use package would benefit from having a temple for it. Yeah, that, it probably would actually. But um, seems super useful for keeping your place in a project. So if you have a certain window configure configuration open, you want to save it and then restore it later. And you know, obviously I can close this and then open it again. And then it's right back where it was. Now the thing I, I noticed here is that it doesn't pull the tab name back the way that it was. I don't know if there's a way to get that functionality added. Uh, Andre says tab bookmark push and pop would be useful for quick change. Hmm. Tab bookmark. So push current tab as a bookmark. Pop the latest. That's cool. I like that. Let's see, save current tab, rename bookmark from old to new, delete current, delete tab bookmark name. All right, so let's, um, let's try this. We will tab bookmark push. Tab bookmark pop. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly yet what that's for. So I push that on. Maybe I closed. Oh, I can't close it. Solo the sole tab. Let's go do a uh, new tab. Close the old tab. Then a pop. Stack is empty. Come on. I just pushed it, didn't I? Okay. Let's do this. Uh, push. New tab, delete the old one, pop. Okay, that worked. So it looks like it pulls it into this current tab though. <laughs> Gun says tab bookmark random for Emacs from hell. Yeah, we might have to do that. Rant, uh, probably change the layout between push and pop. Ah, hmm, good call. That's probably, that's probably right. So, well, I guess winter mode sort of helps with that too. Yeah. Okay, so anything else in uh, tab bookmark? Uh, let's see, delete. We have a couple here. We'll delete that one. Um, tab bookmark open test tab. Close that. Let me try this tab bookmark test tab. Okay, just pulls it up. 
yeah, saving the name of the, the original tab would be nice. I don't know if it's just because I had a, a space in the name, if that was the, the problem. Let's see. Let's rename this tab to uh, test project. Then we will um, tab bookmark save. Okay. Then we can create a new tab and then close the old tab. Then tab bookmark open test project. Okay, so that that does work. It must be the space. Minad says tab bar history mode seems to supersede winter mode in a capable way. Yeah, yeah, tab bar history mode is, is pretty useful for that. I don't really use it, but it does it does make sense. All right. So that's a pretty useful package. I think it's, it's pretty early in the game, though, because obviously there's no documentation yet, and it doesn't seem to be up on um, anything yet. And it only was created nine days ago, so it's pretty early to be talking about this. But it is useful enough already. I mean, uh, if you want to use this for saving your, your tab bar mode uh, tabs to bookmarks, then it's there and, and waiting for you to use it. Uh, what's the next one that I had in the list? Goggles. So I don't remember what this one is. We're going to go look at it right now. Slow, slow, slow. I think my internet is not cooperating today. Come on now. There we go. Pulse modified region. This one is kind of interesting, actually. Tab bookmark rot 13. Great. Highlights the modified region using pulse. Currently, the commands undo, yank, kill, and delete are supported. Uh, the holy counterpart of evil goggles. Now, um, this may not work for me unless I turn off evil mode. I like the images that come up for that search. Okay. Oh, more of these notification sounds. Wonderful. Right, let's see in the in the feed if I can tell what happened. Comparison to volatile highlights. Um, let me, is there a config? No, there's not a config. Yi just subscribed. Thank you, Yi. Okay, here it is. Use package goggles, uh, text mode. Let's drop that at the end in this file. Uh, we're gonna use ensure T here. All right, so now if I turn on this uh, goggles mode, does it actually work whenever I do anything? Yeah, okay, so it does work for me, even with uh, with evil mode, which is cool. So if I delete something, it will flash where I where I deleted it. Frankly, I don't know, uh, and then that, that also happens. So whenever I, I put the text in there, it, uh, it flashes well. Now, it didn't work with, um, I think I'll have to use the actual uh, yank. No. So yeah, let's see. Ah, come on. Anytime I'm trying to switch between uh, evil and vanilla Emacs key, uh, key bindings for selection and yanking, I always in, end up doing something dumb. All right, so now let's go back here and press Control Y. No, what's happening? Whatever. Anyway, we do see that it works. If I uh, undo that, then it flashes green. So that's cool. Kanye subscribe to System Crappers. Yeah, that's definitely not Kanye. Uh, Minad, I think that they are being restored, but if there's a space in the tab name, then the space is not being, anything after the space is not being restored. That's what it looks like to me. Um, okay, so that's a pretty simple package. It might be kind of nice for if you are kind of want to see when things are happening on the screen. Uh, but probably not something that is personally useful for me. But um, if people know of a good reason to use something like that, certainly let me know because I'd, I'd be curious to hear about it. All right, the next one is Org Modern, which seems pretty useful. Um, if you want to have a nicer org uh, configuration without having a whole lot for it. This one got announced. I don't know if it's actually on Elpa or Melpa yet. But we'll give it a, a shot real quick. 
Um, let's go into the config, grab things using straight use package. Uh oh. Yeah, I, I see the stream buffering every now and then. Okay, so straight use package. This is org modern. Post GitHub. Let me get rid of some of these other windows too, because this is a little bit annoying. Okay. Org modern. So we'll pull that package down real quick. Okay, so we have that package. Now, what do we do with it? Mm, org modern mode. Um, okay. Oh, apparently there's a way to use a package install file right here to pull in this, this uh, source file. So that's another way to do this if you don't want to use straight. All right, so let's add a hook to org mode and then go back to test.org and uh, run normal mode. Okay, so already I can see that there are some things that changed. First of all, the quote block uh, looks a little bit different. Let's see. Um, what was the... Let's see. Elisp, Elisp block. Yeah, so you got... Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that it will pop up a little buffer like that. Defun, whatever. Message, test. All right, so um, nicer... <coughs> excuse me. Nicer looking source blocks, it seems. That's kind of cool. Uh, there's some other stuff in the demo here that we can probably copy and paste in the example. Haha, <laughs> Tomas says I could have used that uh, cape line to, to duplicate the straight use package line. That's true. Let's look at the raw for this. All right, let's copy the whole file. How about that? Control A, Control C. And then uh, dump this right here. Okay, I already see some stuff happening. And then delete everything else before that. Interestingly, it seems to take off the, uh, what's that, the hash plus in front of title. Yeah, it does take that off, okay. And I like this little line break here. That's kind of cool to see that in the in the buffer. Also has uh, headlines customized. A nicer look for um, check boxes. That's pretty nice. Then the text for uh, timestamps is also a little bit different. It seems code blocks are obviously different. We saw that before. Uh, also tables, I think, might be rendered a little bit more nicely. So I mean, by default, it seems like uh, this is a, a big improvement. I don't see another table though. Whoops. Oh, there we go. There's some tables here. Um, these don't render perfectly. It's probably a matter of the font that I'm using, I would guess. It seems like uh, in this example, those are rendering correctly. So maybe it's the way that I have my font set up. Hey, Fade. So uh, if you want a nice looking org configuration, I think this is a great way to get one uh, without having to do a whole lot of work yourself. So uh, I don't know, I kind of like it. I might actually try to use some of this stuff. We might even try to pull that into Rational Emacs to avoid having to do all of it ourselves, because why not? I mean, it's better to do, um, to use something existing for this kind of customization. Still in early development. Popular alternative is Superstar. Yeah, the thing I don't really like about this, what I'm seeing so far, is the um, the bullet styles. Some of that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer to just use simpler bullets, but that's just me. Org Modern um, Star. So apparently you can just customize that yourself if you want to. You can just go change the Org Modern Star variable and do that. How about this? Let's go look at um, uh, Customize Group and then uh, Org Modern. And we can look at all the customization settings. So, uh, prettify blocks, uh, checkboxes, hiding stars, horizontal rules. Uh, yeah, you can turn off the, the keyword prettification if you want to. Uh, That's something I would probably do. Uh, line width, user tag label borders, priority label replacements, progress indicator to, to do statistics. That's nice. Oh, uh, I like these characters. That's pretty nice. 
So what's the difference between that? Ah, maybe it's the same thing. Tags, timestamps, and to-dos. Okay, so you can customize pretty much any aspect of that, which is pretty nice. So yeah, um, that's another great one. So I don't know, Daniel, I don't know how you have all the time to, or find all the time to make all these packages, but uh, a lot of really cool stuff uh, coming out these days. Um, I don't think there's anything else r recently, is there, that you've been working on? Daniel says, I may add pixel perfect table alignment, but this is something I didn't plan originally. It's such a hard thing to get right that I wouldn't blame you if you didn't do it because it's really um, painful, I think, to make that happen. I don't know if Emacs is going to get some functionality to make that easier. It'd be nice if uh, if that was the case, but we'll see. Um, one thing we should take a quick look at, though, I think there's been a lot of improvements to Corfu recently that I didn't catch up with uh, just quite yet. Uh, you know, I will say, Daniel, uh, the interaction between Corfu and Eglot after I updated Eglot to the latest version, way, way better. It was really good so it's basically what i expected to do now with the configuration that i have set up for for corfu so kudos to you and to uh joao or however you pronounce his name i think that's the one who's uh maintaining eglot i do have other issues with eglot but that's a, a conversation for another time and it has nothing to do with completions all right so all these extra configuration settings in the corfu example let's take a look at that really quick anything new so I have been using this Corfu auto which is auto completion which I think some people don't necessarily like but I kind of do like it can I get anything uh, completing for me in this buffer let's see all right so there's some stuff I could do use for that org yeah mini pop-up yeah mini pop-up I don't reuse because um, I think I realized that I don't really like the whole pop-up thing, but mini pop-up pop -up is useful for sure if you want uh, pop-ups instead of echo area mini buffer uh, commands. Let's turn on uh, Corfu Auto here. <clears throat> Void function. Ah, I got to put it in the stupid custom block. All right, control alt X. Now if I were to type <clears throat> control alt I, nope. Org. Enter? No, what is it? Org tab. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I was using org auto for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Echo documentation, that seems pretty useful. Never quit even if there is no match. I wonder... That's the thing I was using. Org. I don't remember what Corfo Auto was doing for me. I, I knew I turned it on and I liked it. Oh, that's what it is. It automatically pops up because it just happened to me right now. Okay. So Corfu Auto is great in some places. So if I type org, then it automatically starts popping up. That's what I liked about it because in coding buffers, I was used to the behavior I was getting from... Um, company in LSP mode where um, I'll, I'll respond to your, your comment in a second Tomas where uh, you start typing and then you automatically get completions which is kind of nice however it does end up giving you problems sometimes because if you type something and then press enter then it automatically completes it and that can become really annoying in eShell buffers it can also become really annoying in IRC or ERC buffers where you're typing a message and then it starts completing someone's name and you press enter and you like ping that person by accident. So uh, Corfu Auto should be used only in specific buffers, like prog mode buffers, I think. Uh, in other buffers, it's a little bit of a pain. So I need to go make that, that change to my configuration. However, I do think it's excellent for, uh, for coding buffers where you automatically get that pop up without having to call up um, completion a point. So orderless field separator, I don't have orderless set up in a way to deal with that right now, but that is something that could be useful. Um, preview, disable current candidate preview. This is something you could also use, I think, to keep it from um, changing your buffer when you start arrowing through the, the, the completion candidates, which I think is something I may be using. 
Um, so let's type in org dash. And then when I start arrowing through, through, it doesn't actually change the text at that at the point, not until I press enter. But if I were to go back and turn that uh, preview current to T and press control uh, X and then type org dash and start using the arrow keys, then it starts changing the, the buffer. So personally, I don't like that behavior, uh, but that's just the way that I use it. So I'm glad that there's uh, settings you can use to, um, to set that up this, this way. Echo documentation. Oh, I want documentation on. So let's uh, set that back to T. So uh, disk. Did I, I didn't run it, did I? Is that what happened? Um, function, variable. Okay, I'm not seeing the docs. L doc mode. Disabled, enabled. Yeah, not working at the moment. Uh, Gavin says I bind ret to nil and shift ret to accept the completion. Okay, interesting. And Tomas says no ensure T. Yeah, in this one, I think I already have Corfu installed from Geeks, so it's picking that up instead. Uh, Minad says, yes, Corfu improved greatly recently. I recommend the newest development version. So uh, what version is it currently? Uh, what's the current tag? Because I have, I'm installing it from Geeks, so I don't have the, the current development release. Okay, 19, maybe that's the one, right? Is it even better, uh, newer than 13 days ago? Because I don't think I have that latest stuff. Yeah, there seems to be some more commits since then. Uh, echo with documentation to 1.0 by default. Yeah. Anyway, Corfu is a great package. I, I'm enjoying it more and more uh, the more that I use it. Let's see, cycle. Yeah, obviously I want that. I'll just uh, throw this in as a suggested config. Reselect first. I don't really like that behavior. But I guess it doesn't matter if you're not using previews. Um, what does on exact match do? Say what? Corfu on. Ah, that's too new. I think that's something that came after this. Yeah, okay. That must be after. Um, hmm. What if we do this then? Ensure T. Ah, it already has it. Yeah, it's picking it up for my Geeks install. Scroll margin. Number of lines at the top and bottom when scrolling. Huh. I don't know what that means. Let's try it. Work dash. Still not sure. Oops. All right. Um, one other thing I'll, I'll point out that I learned about recently is that there is a package that goes along with uh, Corfu. I don't remember what it's called. I know that uh, uh, JD Smith is the one who is uh, the creator of that. Come on now, uh, Kind Icon. So you can install this kind icon package to get some icons in your completions with Corfu, sort of like what you would get before with um, uh, company mode. So that's kind of a nice little visual upgrade. So let's actually check, take a look at that one really quick. This is a bonus. I didn't expect to talk about this, but since we're looking at Corfu and we have time, might as well uh, try it out real quick. Let's drop it right here. This config that I'm I'm haphazardly putting together, I'll put it in the show notes in case you want to take a look at it later. Uh, Star7 says, scroll margin is like when you're two elements from top or bottom, it will show new elements. Thank you, that's helpful. Uh, void function Corfu auto. Oh, did I have... Oh, weird. 
Okay. So this kind icon should be turned on now. How about if I type in org dash? Yeah. Whoa. So I think it doesn't scale well with uh, high DPI screens like mine. <laughs> They're a little bit huge. I feel like it got fixed a little bit after I was using it for a little while though. But you can see there's icons there. I wonder if there's a way to make it not do the icons. Uh, icon default face, Corfu default. Uh, kind icon. Use icons. How about that? Let's turn that off. Um, set Q kind icon use icons nil. Type in org dash. Uh, do I have to recycle? Huh. Why is this needed? Use icons, icon mapping. Non nil default, prefer icons for prefix badges, otherwise use text labels. Default face, blend background, blend fraction. There needs to be a way to control that size though, because those things get enormous. Uh, Gavin says, I didn't put a uh, kind icon in my Corfu config since it seemed a bit unnecessary. Yeah, it is a bit unnecessary. I, I think we need to have some more discussions about what belongs in or out because this looks nice, but it is a good question about whether it is necessary uh, or not. We may have some like extras packages that we could pull in that uh, throw some extra stuff in there, but uh, we need to sort of figure out what the line is, I think. All right. Um, why is it still showing icons when I told it not to? I wonder. Did I set it wrong? Kind icon, use icons. Set the nil currently. Hmm. Um, kind icon, margin formatter. I see. Oh, maybe I need to redo this. Let's uh, clear this out. So set Q, kind icon, margin, formatter. I kind of feel like, no, no, no. Um, what is this? Corfu margin formatters. Corfu margin formatters, nil. All right, so I got a feeling that it's, it's storing some state inside that function and uh, it has to be refreshed. I could be wrong though. Uh, org dash. Yeah, it's still doing the same thing. I don't know if it's even respecting its own setting. Let's check it out. Take a look at the code. Um, kind icon. Kind icon. Margin formatter. Returns a function. Is this a lexical scope file? Yep. Okay. Company kind. Um, what about use icon interesting <laughs> gun says eye candy may cause deck eye eye decay Set default clear cache. Ah, I'm not setting it with death custom. Uh-huh. So here, here we go, kids. Here's an example of um, when you use set Q to set a variable and it doesn't do what you expect. It's because um, this is a death custom variable that has a setter on it. And if I don't use the, uh, what is it, custom. Let's see if this works, actually. Custom set variables. Uh, kind icon use icons nil. That's wrong. Mm. Oh, it needs to be a list. Is it customized set variable? What is it? Ah, customize set va variable. Um, kind icon use icons. Set it to nil. N yes. Let's do it the other way. No. All right. So maybe now that we'll do the right thing. Let's see. Org dash. Okay, so perfect example of why you would want um, 
to use another function for setting these things, but it's, it's kind of annoying that you have to figure it out because of that. Customize set variable, yep. So without the icons, I mean, it's kind of nice. It's still useful having some of the stuff here on that side, but I guess you already have the other margin information here that says it's a function, so it's not necessary to, to have both. So it's really just an eye candy thing. I guess you could turn this part off too if you wanted to with, with Corfu. Corfu, margin, uh, Corfu, what, what would be the setting for that if there is a setting? Metadata, auto commands. Hmm. So, what am I looking for? I'm looking for um, margin, right? <clears throat> yeah, that's not the name. At any rate, good to know that you can change that. It would be nice if, if the uh, font or the icon text was scaled correctly, though. I don't know, I don't know the right way to uh, set that up. Let's see. Kind icon, default face, set the default face to use for coloring. Corfu default, scribe face, Corfu default. Doesn't have its own sizing set, but I wonder if that's what you would need to do. Probably inherits from default though, doesn't it? No. Doesn't hear it from anything. Hmm. Must I must. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Marcus says, anyone else have an issue setting a custom theme in the rational Emacs config? I'm trying to set it to do Nord and it works by manually set, but it reverts when starting Emacs. Um, that's a great question. I don't know. Maybe you should file an issue, um, Marcus, on the repo and see if anybody else has had that issue. Something we should fix if there's a problem. Gun says, can't you scale the icon font? Well, um... Let's see, what's it called? Kind icon. So it doesn't have its own face. Um, Corfu, uh, describe face. Corfu default annotations. Oh, annotations is what those are called. Corfu annotation. Okay. Can't turn that off. Let's see. Let me go to the issues here. I don't see any issues. Scale. There's an odd format. Daniel filed this issue. I think these are being rendered by svglib, if I'm not mistaken. What about uh, svglib style default? Ooh, def default style. Font size 19. Huh. Height 0 0.9. Font size is not something that I use. Maybe that's something that has to be fixed. So how about this? Let's go to SVG lib. Uh, Emacs. Uh, issues. Uh, oh, how the font doesn't play nice. Yeah, this may be an issue with SVG lib. Because it seems like SV <coughs> excuse me, SVG lib has some issues with uh, font scaling in certain cases.
Hmm. Well, that's something that could probably be fixed at some point by someone. Hey, Foskers, nice to see you. Uh, let's see. Minad says, I don't look at other editors. I used Emacs forever and Eclipse for a few years some time ago. I don't want to spend too much time to dig into other editors, but if someone comes with good suggestions, I'm open to it. I think this is in response to um, Tomas asking if uh, the kind icons are, were inspired by uh, Sublime Text. Okay. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> Firefox has been crashing for me quite often lately, and it's uh, not, not, not too much fun, but whatever. I, I need to get my cute browser setup fixed so that it, uh, it actually shows text on the screen, and then I don't have to use fi Firefox anymore. Foster says, are you in Greece? Yes, I am in Greece, and I'm having a great time here. And I, I do not say that sarcastically, even though it sounds sarcastic. The only thing I'm not having a great time with is finding a house. Okay, so that's basically it um, for the stream today. Uh, let's copy over the configuration for what we did. I'm only going to copy the stuff uh, relevant to um, what we did today. The rest that's, that I'm pulling from uh, Rational Emacs is uh, unrelated. All right, let's pull that in. Drop it in right there. So anybody who wants to give that a shot can after the stream. Just copy that and you'll have what we did basically. Okay. Minnet says, I hang around in the Doom Emacs chat, so there's some inspiration from NeoVim. Yeah, there's definitely some Neo NeoVim talk going on in there. Uh, Zacchaeus says, Cute browser might not be fixed for a while. I'm using a specific Geeks commit to keep mine working. Interesting. Interesting to hear that. What's the problem with that? I, I haven't actually looked into it yet, but uh, it's a little bit annoying that, um, that that's happening. I think uh, Hyder Mirza tell, told me on IRC that there is a, a, a way to deal with that problem, but I just haven't done it yet. Uh, that's okay, Scott. Uh, Gavin, well, Cube Browser is broken in Geeks. For some reason, in Geeks, when you install Cube Browser with Geeks, there's no text on the screen. Uh, let me just open it up for you, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let me go to, uh, see, here there's text. I don't know why it works on this site, but if I go to github.com, then, um, I'm pretty sure you're going to see, okay, so some of the text is going to be blank. And also, especially if you go to a repository, so let's see, say, go to uh, EFS. Super slow. Yeah, so for whatever reason, text is not rendering, um, and you can't even select the text to see that it's there. It's just not there. It doesn't render at all. Very weird. So as you can tell, it's not um, not usable from that, from that perspective. Zakia says it will be uh, patched in the free release as, uh, around September, according to the Geeks bug th thread. The f September? <laughs> Invisible ink, warm it up, says gun. Yeah, that's, I guess that's an option. Yeah, I mean, Geeks has a patch model. Why can't we just put a patch file in Geeks? Um, to patch the problem over. I think that that could just be done in, in the Geeks repo, period. I say that, but I'm not going to go spend the time to do it myself. So if anybody is, uh, you know, wants a, something to do on, uh, to, to contribute to Geeks, that would be a nice thing to do. If you could find that patch and then uh, su su submit it to the Geeks repository for the Geek Browser package. I think if there's, if there's anything else worth mentioning, I haven't really been working on my own Emacs configuration for a while. Um, obviously, Rational Emacs is the next place where I'd probably try to spend time and pull that into my own Emacs config, but we, I think it needs a little bit more stuff in there first. And a lot of people are adding things, so I need to go and review those PRs to see if we can get that pulled in. But certainly interested in trying to use that in my own config, because uh, I think it would be kind of fun to have all of us using the same configuration. Or not all of us, but whoever wants to try it. Let's 
So I think that's going to be it for today. We might uh, end the stream a little bit early because, you know, I don't have anything else prepared. And uh, I can smell dinner being cooked in the next room. And <laughs> it reminds me that it's time to eat. So, um, like I said, next week on Flux Harmonic, we'll be doing some, some cool stuff, uh, both language development and um, game programming. So if you are interested in either of those things, check that out. And then I'm hoping I'll get the next Emacs from Scratch video out next week. Like I mentioned before, it's going to be about key bindings and not just, you know, define key, global set key. We're going to talk about a little bit more than that, uh, like setting your own key prefixes and leader keys and things like that if you want those types of things. So that should be a cool uh, short little video that you can check out. If I have time, I'll get, get out next week. Otherwise, the week after. Um, Gun says, how large is your profiles.el for Kimax 2? Let's just go find out. How about that? Dot uh, Emax profiles. Um, only this many lines. Not too many, but it's probably more than usual because I have a few that I try. Um, Doom Emax was in there at some point, but then, you know, I don't really use Doom Emax, so uh, I took it out. But these are the ones that I have been using, as you can see, for uh, demonstrations recently. So... So anyway, anyway, folks, I uh, hope you all have a great weekend, and we will be seeing you back here uh, next Friday. So until then, happy hacking. We'll, we'll catch you later. Thanks for joining.